So now we can put all our information together and what we've learned in order to solve a problem. So we have this one here, the star Sirius. You can look it up in the sky. It's actually the brightest appearing star. Now it appears bright, well we're going to see a few things about it. Well, first of all, it's it's actually a brighter star, so let's talk about this. It has a surface temperature of 9,900 Kelvin and has a luminosity of 25 times L with this little circle in it like this. That means uh, this is the luminosity of the sun. So we're basically saying it has a luminosity that's 25 times the luminosity of the sun, where the luminosity of the sun is given by this value. So it's around 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. Remember, that tells you the energy per unit time. So the first question is, what is its peak wavelength? Well, we can look at Wien's displacement law. So if we look at that one right there, we already learned it. And it helps to sort of say what you're using. So we're going to use Wien's displacement law, which tells us that um, lambda is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by the temperature. I'm going to need to use my trusty calculator here, so I'll just uh, wait while it loads. But what we're going to do then is we're going to use this concept. We're going to use this idea right here. Of course, then we're just going to solve for lambda. That's actually pretty straightforward. So in this case right here, then, we're going to say that this is going to be equal to, well, 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. Divide that by 9,900. And therefore, we're going to get that the peak wavelength, maybe I'll call it lambda max. Let's see here. I need my calculator. There it is, and I need to just calculate this. So 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. What I like to do is just press enter just to make sure it sort of knows this. And now you might wonder, what did it just do? Well, that's still the same number. This is just in scientific notation. If you look at this, that's 2.9 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3. So it's the same thing. I take this, I divide it by 9,900 and I press enter, and I get a value of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7. Or I could say that's uh, pretty much 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7. Now I'm only using two significant digits here. So it's 2.9 times 10 to the minus 7. Let me write that down. Times 10 to the minus 7 meters. You might wonder, well, what, what does that mean? Well, maybe we can write it in nanometers because we know a lot of our visible wavelength colors are uh, in nanometers. So let's, let's, I mean, this is the answer. This is really what you needed. But just for fun, let's take a look at what this really means. That's the same thing as saying uh, 290 nanometers. Because a nanometer is times 10 to the minus 9. And you'd have to, well, if you want to make it times 10 to the minus 9, you have to move this decimal to the right by 2. So that's 290 nanometers. And if you know something about your colors, um, if we're looking at this one right here, this is sort of the intensity, and this right here is the wavelength. We know that red, and then here we would have blue. Red is around, so this is in nanometers. Red is around 630 nanometers, whereas blue is around 488. So look at, I mean, this is, this is roughly what the human eye can see. We can go a little bit further each way, but this is roughly what we can see. So if this is 290, that's way less than blue. So what that tells us is that this curve is likely, you know, something that's, you know, way over here, and then it sort of comes down, it's, just, it's probably just only a little tiny little bit of sort of blue. So this, this star will likely appear bluish or whitish. And I think we can actually see this little thing here. Yeah, this is back to the PHET. Um, so if we look at this one right here then, let's take a look at different temperatures. And we're looking at if it was the sun, we can see roughly what color it will look. You can sort of see here what the colors are. If you look, as I bring it down, you're going to see that it's pretty reddish or orangish. As it gets up to the sun, it appears somewhat yellowish. Well, that's a little bit difficult to tell. But watch as I bring it up as high as I can. So the temperature of the star we were looking at, Sirius, was supposed to be 9,900. Now, this is as high as I can go as 9,200. But take a look at this then. It's going to appear, well, very bright, and it's going to be, appear bluish. And again, the reason is because the peak is way up here, way in the ultraviolet. That means that we're going to be able to see some of the light over here. So some of it's going to appear very intense and blue. See, there's, there's some blue that's very intense. You can see there's some reds, but they're very low intensity. So this gives us an idea, then, what the color will look like. So it'll probably appear bluish-whitish. 
And then we can even go further with this. We can say, what is its radius? And if we want the radius, then we should use the Stefan Boltzmann. Right? So use the Stefan Boltzmann's law, which says that luminosity is equal to sigma times a times t to the fourth. That's the equation we're going to use. Now, um, we have to use what we know about the luminosity. We were told that it's 25 times the luminosity of the sun. Remember, that's what we were told here, that the luminosity is 25 L sun. And the luminosity of the sun is 3.9 times 10 to the 26. So we can say that it's 25 times 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. Well, maybe I want to figure that out. So again, I just get out my calculator. Maybe I can clear it and clear the history. And then just say, well, I want 3.9 times 10 to the, whoops, that's the wrong button. 3.9 times 10 to the, that's the little EE symbol, 10 to the power of 26. I want to take that thing and multiply it by 25. And I get uh, 9.75. So let's use two significant figures. So 9.8 times 10 to the 27. So we'll say it's 9.8 times 10 to the 27 watts. Okay. So this tells us then it's much more luminous than the sun. Well, much more. It's 25 times as luminous as the sun. Remember, that means it puts out that many more joules per second. So it is a brighter star. It really is brighter. Now, why does it appear really bright? Well, that's actually just because it's close compared to other stars. Right? Our own sun, of course, appears really bright. Why is that? Well, it's really close to us. So although it has sort of a, our own sun has a luminosity that's actually 25 times less than Sirius, it appears way brighter in the sky because we're right up against it. But now let's take this luminosity, then we're going to need this. So I'm going to sort of put a circle around it, just telling me that I'm going to use it. Now I want to solve for radius, and the radius is contained within this a term. a is equal to 4 pi r squared. Remember, that's the surface area of a star. And so that means I could rewrite this and say L equals sigma times 4 times pi times r squared times t to the power of 4. Now I want to get r by itself. So what could I do? Well, I could take my luminosity and divide it by the 4 and the pi and the sigma and the t to the power of 4. That would leave me with, I'll put the r squared on the left side, because remember what's on the left side is equal to what's on the right, which means I can take this stuff and write it over here. So if I put the r squared first, I would have L. And if you want to review your algebra rules, remember you want to get rid of the sigma that's over here. So you want to divide by sigma and 4 and pi. So I'll write the 4 first. So 4 pi sigma t to the power of fourth. That is r squared. That means then that r is going to be well, technically plus or minus, but we're only going to consider the positive radius here. It's going to be the square root of L over 4 times pi times sigma times t to the power of 4. Now this right here then may seem complicated, but we can just do this with our calculator. So we're going to say r equals, let's just fill in the value, so we have 9.8 times 10 to the 27. All that is divided by 4 times pi times sigma, which is 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. We know that because that's the constant. I don't think I showed you that here. But that's the Stefan Boltzmann constant, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. And again, I like it because it goes 5, 6, 7, 8, sort of. So there it is. And I have to multiply all that by 9,900 to the power of 4. Can't forget that. I take that whole answer and take the square root of it. So phew! That may look really complicated, but I can totally do it. Now, there's a number of ways of doing this on your calculator. So many people have different ways that they like to do it. So you just try it out yourself. What I tend to like to do is I like to work on the most complicated part first. So I'm actually going to calculate the bottom stuff. And I'm going to say this divided by that answer. And then I'm going to take the square root of the answer. So I'm going to start with probably, uh, I'll start off over here. So I'll say 9,900 to the power of 4. Maybe that's what's nice to start with. 9900 zero, zero, to the power of 4. I'm going to say enter. All right, so I've basically dealt with this. I've got to multiply that by this answer. So I'm going to say times, because right, that multiplies my last answer, times 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. I'm going to press enter. 
All right, so now I've done this times this. Well, I've got to multiply those by 4 times pi. You might wonder, why doesn't he just do it all in one go? That's because I seem to find whenever I try to do everything in one thing, I almost always make a mistake. So I like to just do it in little pieces. So this big mess now, this bottom part, that's this answer. Now what I want to do is do 9.8 times 10 to the 27. I want to divide that by this answer. So maybe I'll put brackets just to be extra safe and cautious. So 9.8 times 10 to the 27. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. I better be very careful here. Go back and maybe delete. I think I pressed the wrong button there. So I want 9.8 times 10 to the power of 27. Close that bracket. Divide that by this last answer. So I can call that up right here with a little blue answer. So divided by the answer. And now I've basically done this divided by this big mess. So then I have to do the square root of all of that. So square root of the answer. And that gives me this value right here. So that is my answer. So I could say then that this is, well, if I want it to uh, two decimal places here, um, sorry, one decimal place or two significant figures, then I would say that this is 1.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this would be 1.2 times 10 to the 9 meters. So R would be 1.2 times 10 to the 9 meters. But now we didn't want it in meters, did we? We wanted it in kilometers. So we have to convert that and uh, well there's um, 1,000 meters in a kilometer so that means I have to divide this by 1,000 and that means then I would just take 3 less from the exponent here so in other words instead of being 9 it would be 6. So that means then r is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. What this really means then this is this means that Sirius has a radius of 1.2 million kilometers. You might wonder, wow, is that very big? I don't know. Uh, it seems pretty big. So this value of 1.2 million kilometers, you might wonder, how does that compare to the radius of the sun? Well, the radius of the sun is approximately uh, 7 times 10 to the 5 kilometers. And if that's the case, then we can just divide this number by this number and see what we get. So let's just do this right here. Let's just clear everything here. So we can say 1.2 times 10 to the 6. We can divide that by the radius of the sun, which is around 7 times 10 to the 5. And we get an answer of around 1.7. So what that tells us then is that this radius here, the radius is approximately 1.7 times the radius of the Sun. So you can see that this one right here, although Sirius is appearing very bright in the sky, um, its luminosity is actually not that much. I mean, it's yes, it's 25 times more luminous than the Sun, and its radius, in other words, its size, is only around 1.7 times that of the Sun. So it's not that much bigger than the Sun. It's about twice as big, but I mean, when I say it's not that much, I mean, yes, it's almost two times the size of the sun. But um, there's other stars that are way, way bigger. In fact, the luminosity of Sirius, you might think, wow, that's a lot more than the sun. But it's actually possible there exist stars that are a million times the luminosity of the sun. And they're much, much bigger than the radius of the sun. So keep that in mind. So Sirius, it's not really that luminous. It's not really that, that big compared to our sun, and yet it appears bright, and that's just because it's actually fairly close to us. So hopefully you see this as a nice example of what we can do by using the Wien's Displacement Law and the Stefan Boltzmann's Law, in other words, uh, in order to tell us something about the uh, maximum wavelength, which tells us something about, uh, well, temperature, which then tells us about the size of the star itself. I think this is a nice little way to put it all together.